In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to build a sprite sheet for Unity. So, by the end of this, you should be able to create a 2D character sprite sheet for your 2D game in Unity. Hey guys, this is Al over at GameDevHQ.com. Like and subscribe, check out our other content on this amazing channel, and please check us out at GameDevHQ.com. This tutorial was requested by a member of our Discord community and is based off of Course 3, a tutorial aimed at mobile 2D game development in Unity, and is also a published game of ours called Dungeon Escape DL, which is available on iOS and Android. In this tutorial, we're going to show you what software we use to make our sprite sheet and how to apply that sprite sheet inside of Unity. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to build our sprite sheet. So we're going to assume that we're going to have some animations ready. So currently I have some animations of our course three night and it's an image sequence. I have a total of four animations that I want to bring into unity as a sprite sheet. So what do I use to create my sprite sheets? I use a little program called Texture Packer. You can find it online in this site. I believe there is a free downloadable version, but the actual paid for version is really cheap. I think it's something like 30 bucks or 60 bucks. It's, uh, let's see, yeah, $40 for the entire thing. So it's definitely worth the purchase, especially if you plan on doing a lot of textures, the sprite sheets. Um, it's just too much of hard, uh, too much hard work to do it uh, consistently. So, um, how do you make your sprite sheet? Uh, real simple. You just go ahead and grab all your sprites, and you can just drop them into this folder right here. And what it will do is it will try to create what it thinks is the best sprite sheet for you. Now we're gonna give this a couple parameters. So first of all, we're gonna do a power of two and we want this to be a 2048 by 2048. So you see all these um, sprites up at the top. Um, right now it's just kind of slamming them together to get the best uh, wrecks. So I'm just gonna go to a basic mode and instead of packing it the best, I'm going to, or the trim, I'm gonna turn my trim to off. So you can see now the sprites are in order. And I wanna make sure it's sorted by name. So it always sorts in order. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and add my hit animations. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these since I got the extra space in this uh, 2048 by 2048 texture. And let me just zoom out to show you how much extra space I still have. So I'm just gonna take these and drop these in at the very bottom. And it's going to add those sprites in as well. And then I'm gonna add in my jump sprites. should be right over here and listed in order. And then I'm gonna also add in my swing sprites. Now the goal would be you'd wanna fill this entire sprite sheet up with as much as possible. I don't think we're gonna be able to cut the size into a 1024 and fit everything in here, but you would add in your, your crouch animation, you would add in your, um, your regular swing animation, a bunch of other animations, and, and basically you wanna fill this whole thing up. Uh, for mobile, you don't wanna go over 2K as far as your sprite sheet goes. Um, so if you can keep it at this size, uh, you'll, you'll be pretty good. For this instance, I'm gonna leave this right here. I'm gonna call this my new sprite sheet. And then I need to hit publish sprite sheet. And it's going to do its thing and it's gonna say it's done and we are good. So we've actually built our entire sprite sheet at this point. From here, you go ahead and take that sprite sheet wherever it is and drop it on into your scene. And here it is as it currently stands. 
Now, if we go to, so here's our scene view. And right now, this is reading as one giant sprite sheet. It's not reading as a bunch of sprites. So we need to fix that. So we know that this sprite sheet, I believe is 16 by 16. So we want to go to our sprite, but instead of single, we're gonna use multiple. And we're gonna go to our sprite editor at this point. And we're gonna hit apply. And it's gonna bring up our sprite editor window. And we wanna do is go to slice, and we're gonna choose by cell count. And in this, we're gonna go 16 by 16, and we're gonna hit slice. And now, you see how it created all these cubes uh, through all our sprites right here, and they're all in sequence at this point. And then all you need to do is hit apply, and that creates your sprite sheet. Once that's done, go ahead and close this out, and you'll see that you got all these sprites down here listed in a row. So how do we make our animation? Well, we're gonna start off by creating our sprite in our scene. And I'm just gonna press F so I can zoom in. And I'm going to just call this my character. And you know, your normal character would have, um, you know, let's say a 2D component of some sort. You can add your character controller in here. So it has a radius, um, and a height so when it does land on a surface it is you know it has this rigid body to it as well um, but that's all fine and good what I really care about is how do I make this sprite sheet work how do I make this sprite sheet animation work and really what you're working with here is an animation now so we want to create an animator so we're gonna click on create and we're gonna go down to animation and we're gonna call this our character. And yeah, I spelled animation wrong. No big deal. And I'm gonna click on my character and just gonna drop in my character animation. Now, this is going to create our animation controller right here. And if I zoom in over here, basically what our animation controller is, is whenever we click on a character, you see how this character animation tab comes up here? And this is the animation. So I'm just gonna rename this. Let's call this death. And you see how this animation changed to death. That is, we can create additional animations now, drop them in here and have them appropriately named. So I know for us, we created four different types of animations. We created a death, we created a jump, we created a hit, and we created a jump attack. And all those animations are on the sprite sheet. So I can drop my hit right here, I can drop my jump right here, and I can jump my drop attack right here. Now, why do I do this? I do it so now when I select my character, I could see all four of those animations in this area. So the next part is how do I get this to play an animation? Cool, easy. All we have to do is we have to go to our sprite sheet and I know that this first one is my death animation. And I know it goes from sprite zero to 34. So I'm gonna select sprite zero to 34 and I'm just gonna drop it right here. And now my animation plays on the screen. And if I hit playback at full screen, you see how fast this moves? This is due to your sample rate. This is kind of like your frames per second. So if we do something like let's say 30 frames per second, you can actually slow it down a bit and your character will animate a little bit slower. And if you go to 15, it's even slower than that. So I'm gonna keep mine right now at 30. From here, I'm gonna go to my hit animation. And in my hit, I start at frame 35. And I go to frame 65. So let's go ahead and select 35 to 65, drop them on in, and we'll do a 30 frames per second animation 
go ahead and play that. Pow! Character's getting beat up now. Then I can go to my jump animation, which starts at 66. And it plays all the way through to, it looks like, 94. So I'm going to take my 66 to 94, drop them on in, set it to 30. I'll play it back, my jump animation. And this is a good one to look at because some of us like to create animations where the character will jump and stay in this position, right? And hold for a while. You can easily do that just by grabbing these frames and move them to the side. So now we're messing with our timeline animation. So go ahead and press play. Or if you don't like these end animations at all and you just want them to hold in the air, just delete them. You don't need them. So he'll just jump into the air all the way to the top and he'll just hold on this animation the entire time. Then we have our final animation, which is our jump attack, which we can drop into here. And if we play this back, he's going to have his flame sword, and then he's going to land on the ground. I think probably in this instance, we may just hold it right here and delete the rest of these frames, since I don't really care about that. And I can even take this last frame and extend it out. So he'll go jump swing, jump swing, jump swing. And I'll set this sample rate to, let's say, 25. And then by the time that's over, he should land on the ground. If you want to get that 8-bit kind of look, instead of having a bilinear or trilinear, you could just simply set your sprite sheet to a no-point filter, and now your character has this kind of 8-bit look to him that's very old school and very fun to play with. So with that, that is exactly how you build a sprite sheet in Unity and how you can start applying this to your character. And a special thank you to all the Plus and Pro members out there. Your support keeps this channel going. We do not do a Patreon. We do Game Dev HQ Plus and Pro memberships. And with that, we want to give you guys something. It gives you a chance to support this channel, but we also give you over 100 3D, 2D visual effects assets for your video games. All of our courses that we stream you get access to everything to help you become the next latest and greatest game developer out there. So please check it out if you're looking to support us. Again, this is Al over at Game Dev HQ. We're out of here. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with another tutorial. Take care.